Hello composers and welcome to my piano. But today we're going to be talking about piano sounds and since I don't have really great mics or the ability to keep this set up as a studio to record this piano and it's not always in tune, I don't keep it in tune for recording, that means I need some good piano samples to use. Now, as luck would have it, I just got a brand new SL88 Grand MIDI controller from Studio Logic. I love it and it is providing me some really good insight into some piano samples that I have. And so I want to share with you a bunch of free, a baker's dozen or so, of free and paid piano samples that you can listen to and see what you think. And maybe these will help you with your composing. I know they do with mine, and I'm still kind of experimenting to see which sound I like best. So I thought maybe you might like to go on that journey with me and listen to 10 or 12 piano samples that I have and see which one you like best to inform maybe you which way you want to go with finding the perfect piano sound for you. It's really important for us as composers, especially if you're a piano composer. So let's go on over to the studio and listen to some piano samples. Okay, so here we are in the lab and here's my beautiful new SL88 Grand by Studio Logic. It feels great, wooden keys. But my purpose of doing this video is to jump right in and start showing you some of these pianos and how they react with a really nice 88 note controller. One of the problems people try to do with keyboards is they try to use something more like my Complete 61, which is synthesizer keys, and try to get authentic sounding piano, and you really can't. So what you've got to do is you've got to have a really good feeling keyboard to you, and it's best that it's a MIDI controller that will control these samples adequately, not just... Sometimes when you have digital pianos or you have synthesizers... I mean, most synthesizers these days are built to be pretty good MIDI controllers. So if you're, if you're talking about something like the, the high-end motif keyboards or the Nord keyboards, again, I sometimes feel that pianos that are digital pianos are meant for those keyboards are meant to play the sounds in those digital pianos this keyboard has no sounds it's a midi controller its only focus is controlling midi and so my goal and my focus was to find the right keyboard that felt good to me but also controlled midi right so the first piano we're going to talk about is the spitfire labs autograph piano you will find that information below, and I'll show you a picture of it here. And I'm just going to play a little bit. I'm going to play a little slow stuff and fast stuff on every one of these, and you can just kind of get a sense of what uh, the particular sample sounds like. Okay, here we go. This is the Spitfire Labs Autograph Piano. I should also tell you that I am using the same reverb on all of these. It's the um, Logic Space Designer, and it's the Scoring Stage plugin, which I tend to use a lot for classical things, orchestral things, things that I'm thinking that might be on a stage in a concert hall. Otherwise, there is no other reverb on these pianos. Uh, like, I've turned off the reverb that each program or each particular piano has that comes with it. Now, I like this piano. I feel like it could use a little high end, so I'm just gonna add just the tiniest bit of EQ. Uh So 
this lab's autograph piano is not bad at all. And if you're looking for something free, you might want to look into Spitfire Labs and the autograph piano. Spitfire Labs is all free. There's tons of sounds there. And there's uh, the felt piano, which is very popular there. Or it's called soft piano, I think. And there's other, a few other pianos, but this is like their signature grand piano. So I would suggest uh, this one. All right, let's move on to the next one that I want to talk about. And the next one is a stock logic piano. How good can a piano be that's just a just comes with logic? And we're just going to see how good the stock Bosendorfer grand piano that comes with logic sounds with the SL88 grand. It sounded like there was some reverb on, but there is not, because I turned the reverb off, and this is what it sounds like. So I have to say, I kind of like the way it sounds, but there is some definite room reverb in that particular sample. And again, you get what you pay for when you have a free piano that comes with Logic. So if you get Logic, you have a free sound, and it's the, that's the Bosendorfer. Some EQing might help there. I'm not going to get into that in this video, but just want to show you the sound. So next, let's move on to a piano that a lot of people love. It's called Noir. This is one of the Native Instruments pianos. Everybody loves it. I'm not going to be playing the felt version. Again, today I'm not. I'm staying away from felt versions and affected versions. I'm just trying to get see what all these pianos sound like and feel like with this keyboard. So it's kind of an experimentation for me, but you're just kind of being the uh, recipients of this knowledge. All right, let's listen to Noir. And I'll put on the screen what the actual interface looks like because it's kind of pretty. And I have dialed in a little bit of color and tone on this patch called Emotional. So here is Noir. <laughs> So still, I feel like Noir is a little, has a personality of being kind of this artsy type of piano. I'm not even playing the felt version and it still feels a little muffled and muted to me. Not something I can dig into. Um, so uh, I, this is not a very expensive piano, although uh, a lot of people really love it and they love it for things that are probably not uses in contemporary pop music or things like that. But um, it's a nice piano, and it feels nice. And I have to tell you a story about Noir. I decided, when once I had this, one of the first things I wanted to try out was some of those instruments by Native Instruments. And 
I tried out Noir and tried this particular patch and whatever happened, I don't know what happened, but I wrote a song with it that turned out to be a great song that I wrote for my wife during uh, the time I was sick with COVID a week or two ago. And I was very inspired by Noir and this piano. So um, I just have to throw that in because even though just now feeling I didn't, I didn't really do anything for me comparing it to some of these other ones, but um, just want you to hear what it sounds like. So there are lots of different ways you can configure a lot of these. All right, next let's move uh, into what I use mainly, and that is Keyscape. So I have to be honest, this is my go-to piano. This is the, it's a Yamaha sound. It's a Yamaha C7, which I think, and in every studio that I've ever been in, the Yamaha C7 is what is in the studio. And it sounds a lot like this. And so I'm very, very prejudiced towards Keyscape. It's my current piano of choice. So I just, I like the fact that it's bright. I'm a Yamaha guy. And again, for things that are going to cut through the mix, you want a bright or at least a sound that's going to cut through. And Yamaha's always cut through. So and I'm not sure exactly which keyscape this is that I'm playing. But I believe it's just a, yeah, it's LA Custom C7 studio so um i've tilted the color shift up just a smidge but anyway that is keyscape all right next on our hip parade here is all right so this is one that uh it's just a garretton piano that comes with the personal orchestra that i have now garretton has a couple different pianos, a light and a, uh, it's about $79. And then they have another one that's about $199 called their CFX. That's their main piano. This is not that. This is one that just comes along with the Garretton Personal Orchestra that I picked up years ago. So let's listen to this Garretton piano, which is kind of a it's concert D piano. So it's not bad. Um, it's it's a. I actually use it on my system to bring up a piano sound very quickly because the Aria player that comes with Garretton is a is a light plugin that pops right up. So in case I ever need to get a piano reference, since I only have controllers and no actual pianos in here, so that that might give you a sense that the Garretton CFX piano. You can go listen to there are videos about that. You should if you like the quality of that and i do it feels good on here it's not anywhere as 
close to the keyscape as far as a professional studio piano, as far as I'm concerned. Probably better for like the orchestra stuff, which it comes with an orchestra. So that's Garretton. Okay, so next up on the hip parade here, we are going to do a Musio piano. This is the Senna piano. And this comes with Musio, which by the way, if you don't know, I just did a video that you can see here. I'll put it in the description below. And it is a video that I just kind of talk about Musio and all that it offers for a low, low price for the year. I got it for $49 as an educator for the year. And it is certainly worth that. All sorts of, I got it mainly for orchestral, but it has everything, including pianos. And this is, we're going to look at a few of those here today, but the first one we're going to look at is Musio Cine Piano. This is their piano, I guess the, the Cine Piano that's been around for a while. And again, you can get this for about $99 for the year, not just this piano, but all of the sounds. I think it's a great deal, by the way, personally. There's a couple different deals you can get with it. But if you're a student or a teacher, you can get it for $49 for the year. Then it's a no-brainer, as far as I'm concerned. So this is Museo Cine Piano. Now, if it sounds like it's far away, um, first of all, let me just say, ooh, that was without any reverb of mine on it. Let me see. You got to check these Museo samples because sometimes they will have the reverb on. Nope. That is reverbless. It's one of the problems with music. Some of the Museo samples, they are, I prefer a close mic on everything and then add my own reverb. And I have the reverb bi bypassed on this. Uh, this is the Studio Cine Piano Studio. And listen. Sounds like it's in a room, a large studio room. That sounds like it's pretty far away. This, this note sounds closer, and that note sounds like it's in a large. So that is one of the problems with, with Musio samples in general. Is you just It's kind of like a box of chocolates. You never know what reverb you're going to get. And um, it doesn't sound bad, but it's to me, it, would, it wouldn't help in a mix that much, unless I was going for that, you know. Again, kind of a noir type, you know, soft piano type of thing. Ooh, nice, nice uh, piano pedal sound there. All right, let's move on now to our next piano. And the next piano is also from Native Instruments. And this one's a popular one. And it, it for a reason, it's called the Grandeur. I really like this piano. Um, I think if I didn't have Keyscape and I just had the complete stuff, the Grandeur would probably be what I use a lot just because it sounds like a 
like a Yamaha C7, like a, a, a grand piano in a studio. And I don't know what, um, I think I'm just using the grandeur. I don't know if this is available separately. I'll put that information in the notes or on the screen as I find it out as we go. But really like the grandeur by contact. It's a contact piano and uh, native instruments. All right, our next piano up here on the hip parade is the Yamaha Grand Piano that comes stock with Logic. And to be honest, this is one of the ones that I tell people to use when they only have Logic because I think it is strong. Let's see if I have done anything to this. I've, I've put the, a little top shelf on this just to give it a little bit more high end, but let's listen to the Yamaha Grand Piano. has a little bit of you can tell that the quality is low on some of these things but some of it sounds really good and especially playing with this particular keyboard this this is Yamaha Grand stock Logic piano sound is pretty dang good there are next steps in Yamaha sounds like the Yamaha sound you might have on a home Yamaha keyboard or pian digital piano or the Yamaha sound I have on the Keyscape or Yamaha has its own plugins and things like that. But this isn't bad. It's really. I mean, for a for a plugin that comes free with Logic, not bad. Not anywhere close to Keyscape still or the grandeur, really, but not bad. All right, next up is another contact or native instruments piano called Maverick. bit of honky tonk to Maverick. Um, it, it's not a bad piano, but it it pales to grandeur as far as a piano that I might use in the studio. But as far as a fun piano, there might be some some use for this. It's kind of like a if we look at the interface on it, I'll show it to you. Look at the interface. You can tell it it's supposed to be kind of kind of got a personality. Uh, uh, of its own so you can dial in the tone and the, uh, the resonance and all this kind of stuff and put it in certain places but definitely <clears throat> a personality piano I'm trying to stay away from those so I'm going to move on next up is another Musio piano this is the Musio Session Grand So I still find the Musios to be a little odd as far as the reverb, and that was with my reverb on, but when I turned the reverb off, you could still hear some room. It's like the, the close mics aren't there 
to be able to get the piano sound that we would normally get in the studio. So, all right, that is 11 pianos. Now, there's two more I want to try, and they are from also from Spitfire, but from Spitfire's piano book. So I'm going to load those up and see what they sound like. Okay, so the next one we're going to try is called Yamaha C7. It is from Piano Book. I will show you that page here and also give you the link to it. These are by uh, either amateur or people who know what they're doing as far as sampling pianos, but this is called the Yamaha C7. Let's see what it sounds like. All I have added, this was a Logic, the Logic sampler instrument that you can load stuff in and you could load this right up, r loads right up. There, a lot of these are either in Logic ESX, so if you have Logic, you can load these up, or they're in Contact, which is a pretty well-known sample player, or they're in something called Decent Sampler, which is a free sample player. That Both these that I've downloaded from Piano Book, one of them is in Logic sampler format, and one of them is in Contact format. So let's play the Logic one first. This is a... Yamaha C7. You get what you get a lot of times with these homemade samples and a lot of times they tend to have a lot of personality to them and this one does. I'm gonna take my uh, reverb off or down a little bit so you can hear a little bit more of the sample. Start to run out of polyphony a little bit. So again, if you want something like that, it's available to you. Okay, this last piano is also from Piano Book, and this is called the Dolan Piano. All I've done is taken off the reverb that came with it, and here's a picture of what it looks like in its interface, and which is pretty nice. It's a contact instrument, and let's see what this sounds like. Free piano. So uh, as with the last one, it has its own quirks. It has a lot of noise in some of these. But it's not bad. You could probably dial that out EQ-wise. But these are free pianos. These are p pianos people have sampled. So go to Piano Book and look around if you're looking for free pianos. And again, it does matter that you have a controller that feels like a piano. So... This one, I would probably go in and dial the EQ up a little bit uh, just to give it a little bit more top end, but it might bring out more of that hiss. Okay, one more piano that I wanted to put in this particular roundup was one that I had a lot of hopes for when it came out, and that is the BBC SO Discover Piano, which came out to complement the BBC SO Discover Orchestra, all of which are free. And you can download them at Spitfire right now. You used to have to wait or used to have to you know, pay $49. It's free now. You should have this orchestra anyway as a, I don't know, a fill-in tool. It's not, it's, all the samples aren't great and they have a lot of room sound to them. But this piano, uh, I when I first downloaded it and listened to it, I didn't have an 88-note controller. All I had was a 61-note controller. So I 
played it and it sounded terrible to me. I was very disappointed. All I've done here is add some high end. You could probably add some mid and probably EQ this up to uh, work for you. But remember, this is likely a piano that is meant to work inside a orchestra or an orchestral mock-up, which is what Discover is probably the best for. As usual, the higher notes are going to sound pretty good. They're relatively easy samples. So that should give you an idea of some different pianos. And again, Keyscape is more expensive because it sounds more expensive. Grandeur is another one that is probably a, a more expensive plug-in or it comes with native instruments. But then there are other ones like the very first one we played. And if we compare the the... Labs autograph piano, which wasn't too bad on the Yamaha stock piano in Logic. And so this will give you just some ideas of different pianos, what they sound like. Go look them up for yourselves. I know it, you will have other ones. I do have Ivory, as, which is another expensive set of grand pianos, but I couldn't get it loaded yesterday. Um, and so I, I'm not going to show off that today. And there are other free pianos that I'm sure that you will tell me about in the comments. Feel free to put those in the comments to let everybody know about free pianos that you can use to do your composing. And uh, that's about all I have to say. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it's been helpful in some way. Goodbye, composers. <laughs>